So my wife's coworker had asked me if I had any slabs wide enough that he could make a bar top out of. And I didn't have anything wide enough to get to his width, but I did have these narrower slabs that I told him I could glue together for him and make the bar top out of that for him. Now, this is kind of exciting for me because these slabs here were some of the first stuff that I cut on my bandsaw mill. And it's especially exciting for me because I'm pretty sure this will be the first time I've used anything that I've cut on the sawmill here in the shop. So that's kind of nice. And it's a very quick project, so in a few hours I can knock this out and be able to actually use some of the stock finally. So his two slabs are elm and they're about 10 feet long. And the final width that he's looking for for his bar top is about 88 inches. And he's looking for a final width around 14 to 15 inches wide. So I should be able to very easily join these two together to make that full width up. So I can use a straight edge that's going to give me a cut line that's going to give me an edge I can join together between the two boards. So for whatever reason, my joint here decided to stop in the middle of this cut and it's not turning on now, so I don't really want to deal with it right now. So I need to bring down the level of this like two foot section down to the level of the rest of the cut that I had started on the jointer and I can finish playing these things. And since this area has already been flattened by the jointer, I can very easily use a handheld planer to bring the level down to the level of the rest of the board. So I'm not really sure what's wrong with the jointer, hopefully it's just overheated. But well, one thing I thought of is, although I can true up both edges on the non-live edge slab, the live edge one, I won't be able to do that on the table saw. And of course, I stopped early before this edge is totally trued up when I was using the jointer earlier. So hopefully the thing will turn on tomorrow when it cools down. But it's kind of weird because I pushed that thing a lot harder than that before without any problems. So. To kind of move forward, I'm going to start with some epoxy filling. And the first core I'm going to do here is just with a clear epoxy. And that's going to do two things for me. First of all, it's going to go all the way down to the bottom, since these do run all the way through and start sealing up the underside. And the other thing it's going to do is that because we're going to come back and fill this with a tinted epoxy, the clear epoxy is going to soak into uh, like this bark here in the middle and solidify that so it's not going to absorb any of the tint from the secondary epoxy I'm going to apply next time. So that should help keep things looking pretty even. So the underside just gets sealed up with some masking tape. So it's definitely a good idea when you have a very large void to fill in multiple steps or multiple pores. That way that first pore essentially becomes a dam so you don't have to resist as much, I guess, hydraulic pressure from all that epoxy pushing up against the masking tape in a sense. So if I was just to go ahead and try and fill this thing all in one step, that masking tape would have to resist the force of all that epoxy above it, and I'd probably end up with some leaks. So you can kind of consider the first coat a true seal coat, because it's literally going to seal up the openings on the bottom, 
and not allow the subsequent coats to seep out the underside. So that first sealed coat of epoxy has cured and I did have a little bit of a leak, but it didn't really get too far because there wasn't a lot of epoxy back there forcing its way through. This kind of solidified itself before it really had a chance to totally drain out. But at least now I know this is totally sealed and I can go ahead with the rest of the filling. Now I'm going to jump around a little bit. I got the joint to work in again. It had tripped the internal overload. So I got the thing taken apart and reset that. So I was ready to go again. So I'm going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to clean up the epoxy on the surface here, get these two things joined together, and then glue them together. That way I can do the rest of the epoxy filling while it's in the clamps getting glued together. So with this in the clamps, now I can continue with my epoxy filling. I have two batches of epoxy in here, and to that I'm going to add eight drops of this trans tint medium brown. So I have a few small bubbles I can fill with that second application. I also have this much larger uh, void down in here where the epoxy flowed down that wasn't quite enough on top of it. So this needs a little more epoxy in here. Now before I get going on doing the rest of the filling, I'm going to cut this thing down to final length because I do have some kind of cracks over here. So I'll make sure that uh, I can fill these things in if I need to. So I'm going to cut this to length looking at it from this face because I want to remove all of the kind of wane on the underside of this half. So the epoxy is all set up now and now I'm ready to start working on the finish prep. So I'm going to start addressing the live edge here. Now I don't have a whole lot of work to do here since the bark did fall pretty cleanly. So I'm just going to give this a light hand sanding just to clean up any little bit of debris, kind of smooth things out a little bit. And I can also start breaking the edges just to soften that feel. Now I can start with my surface prep with the sanders. I'm going to start pretty aggressively to get the excess epoxy knocked down and then kind of go from there. I'm also going to go for a just kind of lightly broken edges on this. So I'll use the sanders to lightly break the edges as I get up into the higher grits. And then for the corners, I'll kind of round those off a little bit, make them just a little bit softer. Time to put some finish on here. I am pretty excited about this because uh, we got some double crotch going on here. So this is the underside right now. And of course, since it's not going to be seen, I didn't really spend a whole lot of time making this side all perfect. So I didn't really sand the epoxy area back, so there's some ghosting there. I didn't fill any of the voids on the underside. You know, nothing too fancy down here.
All right, here we go. Not too bad. Definitely some really cool crotch figure going on down here and just an overall really cool piece. I really like the color of the elm. It almost has a butternut type color, but it's of course much harder than butternut. So I think I'll be using some more of this elm in the future because it's some pretty nice stuff. And this project was a nice kind of change of pace. It was great to do something that really wasn't that complicated or challenging and I can get done in just a few hours and have a finished piece, which is absolutely beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this relatively quick project. I know I did, <laughs> but that's it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the bar top, or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.